that was an excessively pointless intro because the very thing that we're talking about today is this HP Pavilion and really why I acquired this thing for my mobile editing instead of sticking with a MacBook or even with my iPad that I had edited mobily on for a while. Um, yeah, I came across this HP Pavilion, thought it was a pretty good deal, ended up buying it a few weeks ago and have actually fallen in love with it. So we're gonna talk about some of the things that I like about it, some of the things that I don't like about it and why I think it's a good budget friendly option for someone who wants to edit mobily. Let's go ahead and hop into it. Hey, hi, I know it's been a while guys, but uh, I'm back with some reviews. And like I said in the intro, today we're gonna talk about this HP Pavilion and some of the things that I do enjoy about it. I've been using it for a few weeks now, really to edit a lot of mobile stuff. Uh, whenever I'm out and about, I don't have my desktop with me. Obviously I can't put my desk in the back of my truck and edit everything with the big rig. So um, I needed a mobile friendly option that wasn't my iPad because my iPad had been driving me nuts with not having enough storage for or all the footage that I was loading into it. Also, whenever I was shooting with my Fuji footage, I could not load anything into the iPad that was H.265, which I love shooting in, even though on the R here, it will only shoot H.264 uh, internal, but I needed something that I could actually edit real footage with and not have to shoot H.264 if I had the option for something else. Anyways, enough rambling about that. Let's talk about this HP Pavilion and why I think it's a great option for people who want to edit mobily. Okay, so I've got the specs pulled up here on the Pavilion and I wanna go over a few things really fast as far as things that I believe are great about this HP and things that I believe could be upgradable in the future. We'll talk about that. So firstly, this is running an i7 10th gen processor, which I was pretty excited about considering the price that I got this laptop at. I think right now Intel is on like the not i9 i9 something like that not really sure they have so many different variations and once again i came from mac so still getting acquainted with the pc world but i7 10th gen great processor secondly we have eight gigs of ram now that is one of the things that we're going to talk about here in a second as far as upgradability goes not that eight gigs is a bad thing but when it comes to editing or something that's labor intensive on the processor, definitely need a little bit more RAM. So we'll talk about that. Um, the only thing that I don't like spec wise about this computer is the fact that it has a spinning disk hard drive. It is a one terabyte and obviously that's not gonna be a big issue until a couple of years down the road when it wears out, no different than my MacBook did. That's something that's also upgradable. So that's the specs, like we said, i7 10th gen, eight gigs of RAM. We've got a one terabyte spinning disk hard drive internally and clock speed on this is 1.3 gigahertz nothing crazy fast but clock speeds don't really bother me I don't look too far into that I want to know what it's actually doing whenever I'm running the programs that I use and so far with Lightroom Premiere Pro I've not had any problems with it even comparing it to my big rig um, obviously it's not as fast as my big rig but it has been great for mobile editing so far um, so that's the specs on the HP Pavilion okay so let's talk some pros and before we go any further I didn't actually mention the model number this is the HP Pavilion I think the 9500 like I said, it's the i7 10th gen 15.6 inch screen. Um, so yeah, that's the actual model of the HP Pavilion that I have right here. But anyways, going into the pros with this computer and some things that I like about it. Number one, the price. I got this laptop at Staples, uh, our local Staples here in town where I live for $569. And for $569, this thing has been a tank. Most MacBooks now, as you guys know, are between $1,500 and $3,000, depending on how you spec it out. I had a MacBook, I loved it, but but I'm not gonna spend $3,000 for something that I'm using as a mobile editing rig whenever my desktop PC didn't even cost that much. So anyways, price point 569, I did add a warranty to it just in case, because once again, new to the PC world, didn't really know what I was getting myself into with HP. So far though, so good. Secondly, this thing is lightweight. It's very thin, but it still feels very rugged as well. I think it's well built. Um, the casing on it's nice. It doesn't feel fragile at all. It almost feels like a MacBook and I I've really always liked the way that a MacBook feels as far as its construction goes. They always feel like they're built nicely as well, so this one is no different. Um, construction on its nice case is nice. Thirdly, this thing has an SD card slot, and that's something that is so hard to come by right now with PCs and laptops, um, MacBooks even as well. Not a lot of them have an SD card reader. For me, that is very important because once again, this is a mobile rig. I don't want to have to bring 
a SD card reader with me everywhere I go. So this actually has a slot in the side, pop the SD card in, import the footage, go to town on editing and call it a day. Going down my list here, it renders footage nicely. So once again, I'm using Adobe Premiere Pro to do all my editing with and so far with this computer, I really don't have to drop quality when it comes to skimming the timeline. And I'll show you guys that here in a second. Um, don't have to drop quality whenever I'm skimming the timeline. Don't have to go to you know a quarter quality or half quality. I typically can play back my footage at 100%. Every now and then it will get a little choppy, um, in which case I have to stop and start it again. And sometimes just in case, I will go ahead and drop it to half quality anyways because it still looks fine uh, on the screen whenever I am editing. And really one of the last pros that I have with this laptop, and a lot of people complain with PCs having a terrible battery life, I've honestly had a pretty good experience with the battery on this pavilion. Now, it's not gonna last like my MacBook did. For some reason, Apple puts great batteries in their products. Comparatively speaking though, I've not really had any moments where I've been like, wow, this battery really sucks. Um, it's actually pretty good. So surprised on that because I've always heard the horror stories of HP batteries and how their battery life is terrible. Moving into the cons on this pavilion, and there's not that many, which is surprising uh, with it being a, I would call this a mid-range consumer friendly laptop uh, that's very surprising in its editing power but really one of the biggest cons uh, kind of like we mentioned at the beginning is the fact that it only has eight gigs of ram for most people this is not going to be a huge issue however if you are picking up this model to do any editing with whether it be through lightroom premiere pro uh, whatever editing software you use you may want to upgrade the ram and i did actually look into the upgradability of it because in this model one of the cool things that they did is actually only put one eight gig stick in it which means you still have a ram slot open um, an eight gig stick for this to give you a total of 16 gigs of ram is only about 30 bucks which is not bad to get 16 gigs of ram in a pretty cheap laptop the other con with this laptop kind of like we already mentioned is the fact that the hard drive is actually a spinning disk versus a solid state once again upgradability though is there i actually have already looked at the samsung evo drives which are what i have in my big rig up here um, and I think for an Evo, it's like a hundred bucks. So for $130, you can have a solid state hard drive. You can also have 16 gigs of RAM for editing. So not a terrible thing whenever you consider the fact that this computer itself was right around 600 bucks. So at that point in time, you're at $750, we'll call it with taxes, which is still a heck of a lot cheaper than any MacBook. And I honestly think that this thing would hold its own with any MacBook, maybe possibly perform a little bit better. I said it, I meant it. So the next con with this, pavilion is the fact that the screen is not very bright uh, I don't try to use it in harsh lighting situations because you literally cannot see the screen even with the brightness turned all the way up it has a really glossy finish to it uh, which that's one thing I know MacBooks are great with is their screens are usually pretty good even in a harsh lighting situation this one is not um, so if you plan on using this outdoors I would tell you to not to because you're not gonna be able to see your screen whenever you are editing and finally my last con with this pavilion which not really a con because I don't think anyone ever pays attention to this and I think people already understand, but the speakers on this thing absolutely are terrible. And I didn't realize how bad they were on a laptop compared to like a MacBook until I bought this thing, but the speakers on it absolutely blow. And HP talks about this great audio system that this computer has. Um, I can tell you like, you need some headphones. You definitely need some headphones with this computer. If you're gonna be editing with it and you're trying to monitor audio, do not rely on these speakers. They are terrible. Okay, so what we're gonna do real quick before I give my final thoughts is we're actually gonna jump into Premiere Pro and do an export test with this computer just so you can see kind of how long it takes to render footage to export it. Once again, comparing to my big rig, it's not gonna be anywhere near as fast. This rig right here on my desk can actually export a full 4K video. You know, a 10 minute video, it can export in like six or seven minutes, which I'm not used to that once again coming from Mac. My Mac used to take forever to export any video. So compared to the big desktop obviously not going to be as fast but for mobile purposes once again i think it's sufficient so let's go ahead and hop into premiere pro and we'll show you that so we are here in premiere pro and as you can see i have a timeline pulled up for a video that i made for facebook and instagram i do have it in full playback quality here so that you guys can see as i skim the timeline it skims it pretty smoothly i'm actually pretty proud with that even if i go to the arrow keys and skim with the arrow keys we're at full playback resolution right there which is 19 or 1080 by 1920 since it's vertical and we have no issues with skimming no issues with playback either pretty happy with that so we're gonna go ahead and export and we're gonna time this thing 
Just got our export tab pulled up. If it will come up, there it is. And as always for Facebook, Instagram, anything that I'm doing mobily, I'm going to just do a simple, simple export here. So as far as our settings go, render at maximum depth, always have that checked. For the bit rate, we've got a two pass, 15 to 20 megabits a second, and use maximum render quality, frame sampling for the time interpolation, and export. Now we sit and wait. We are at 50%. So I actually stopped the timer right there at 50%. And as you saw, it was about four and a half minutes. We're gonna go ahead and gauge it and just say that for a minute and 12 second video, it was gonna take it about nine minutes to export it. So once again, nothing crazy fast, especially compared to a PC like that. So I would say this, if you are gonna be doing a lot of projects uh, that are mobile, keep them short. Like I said, I typically use this to edit for Instagram, for Facebook, and do photo sets as well. This is not made to edit long form content, and that's not the reason I bought the laptop. However, going into my final thoughts, I believe that this thing is great for someone who does exactly Exactly what I just said. Someone who's wanted to edit photo sets on the go, someone who's wanted to edit Instagram videos for stories, Facebook, whatever it is, anything that is short form. I would not rely on this to edit long form content. As you just saw, we can go ahead and assume that it was going to take about 10 minutes to edit a minute and 12 second video. Now, if this is your only option, if you don't have a desktop or if you don't have a laptop that's already fairly fast, um, then I do think it can work. I think that it can definitely work for your editing, especially especially if you're on a budget too. Once again, this laptop was $600 and for $600, it does every single thing that I ask it to do. I've not had any hiccups with it. Do I have to wait for it to export sometimes? Yes, um, not a big issue though. Typically with exports, I tell it to go and then I go off and do something else. And by the time I get back, it's done. So anyways, um, yeah, let me know down below what you guys think about the HP Pavilion. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Would you like to pick one up? Are you gonna stick with your MacBook? What are you gonna do? Also, glad to be back. Back. Once again, I've been away for a couple of months now. I've been pretty busy. Um, so thank you for being a part of this community here on YouTube. I love it. Y'all have a great week and we will see you in the next.